50 years ago, astronauts landed on the moon using a computer less powerful than a mobile phone. This was one of the first computers, and since then, computing technology has driven science forward from modern medicine to the internet. Today, we are on the brink of the next computing revolution. My research involves developing a new kind of computer called a quantum computer, which will solve scientific problems that today's computers just can't do. Every computer works using bits of information. You could think of these bits like tiny light switches. Each one can be either on or off, one or zero in computing terms. The Apollo 11 computer had a few thousand bits, while every smartphone today has billions. But with quantum computing, we're moving beyond bits altogether. Quantum bits, or qubits for short, work using the rules of very, very small things, the rules of quantum physics. Rather than a light switch, a qubit works more like a dimmer switch, which can vary brightness and color of light along a spectrum. Instead of just on or off, a qubit has a whole sphere of possible states. This means that quantum computers can handle extremely large problems using relatively few qubits. In fact, a quantum computer with just 300 qubits would outperform all the world's supercomputers working together. Now, we're not quite there. I'm working on four qubit devices at the moment. To make a qubit, you need something very, very small, like an atom, for instance. I'm isolating individual phosphorus atoms and precisely placing them in a silicon microchip. You could fit a million of these atoms across the width of a single human hair, and I'm able to control them one by one. These atoms are the four qubits of my quantum computer, and I'm going to use them to do the first quantum calculation in this technology. The type of calculation I'm trying to do is called a linear system of equations. Linear systems are a kind of problem that show up in nearly every field of science and engineering. They're useful for things like artificial intelligence, as well as for modeling large systems like the weather or the economy. <coughs> Some of these problems can get so large that even the biggest supercomputers wouldn't be able to do them. They would take hundreds of thousands of years to finish. But with a quantum computer at full scale, we could bring that time down to seconds. 50 years ago, one of the first computers took us to the moon. Today, I'm helping build the first quantum computers. Who knows where they'll take us in the next 50. Thank you. <laughs>